Hi everybody, this is Marcus at Factory 2. I'm here to show you how to make a nice high contrast image using GIMP, a free photo editing software on, uh, on the computer, on, on the internet. You can download it. It's beautiful. Uh, today we're going to be using this picture of the Citizens Bank, a nice vintage photo that I found, and get to something more like this. So you can do things like uh, screen print with it. You can do things like uh, get it in a vector program and do some auto tracing, uh, which we'll show in a video as well. Uh, but for now, how do you get from this image to that type of image? Let's go through the steps. Um, it's really just a couple different things to do. Uh, the first thing I like to do when we get in a situation like this is just check your levels first. Uh, do that under colors and then levels. And you see here we have a histogram. To read the histogram, uh, the darker values are here on the left. So as you see as I pull over the guide, the image gets darker. The things that were dark gray become dark and black. The things that were kind of off-white now get to move and become white as I pull over from the left. So this basically creates the contrast that we want. We just need to be under a little bit more control. So uh, when you grab the middle one, this changes the middle values over, and you can see it's a pretty drastic change. Uh, we want the middle to be over just a little bit. And this all be dependent on the photos that you're using. But in this case, uh, this is kind of what I'm looking for here in this situation. So I'm liking how that's looking. And now we have this uh, bright blue color here in the uh, CB and in the legs. So we need to get rid of that color to get into this type of situation. So to do that, I'll just zoom in a little bit here and take a look at it. And if you select this tool here, this is the Select by Color tool. So by clicking that, it'll grab different colors in your image based on what color you choose. So for me, I'm looking to get this blue. So you can click and then you can also hold shift. You see the little plus sign? and drag around the image to get more of the same colors in that area. So now I have my selection. Grab your bucket tool, make sure your foreground is white, and you can just fill that in to get a pretty good color selection in this case. So there you go. That does a pretty good job of getting close to where we are, where we wanted to be with this. Looks like there's just a little bit more here in the pants. So let's just try it one more time. Color, select, white bucket, and bam. There you go. And this will do, this, this will help isolate and clear out some of those colors. It might be a little tough to do um, if you were to push it to black and white right away or something like that. So now that we have our subject um, in a good high, high contrast situation, still in color, we can drop that color out. And that you do that in image, mode, and then you can switch it to grayscale, just like that. So drop that to grayscale, and now we're going to do the same levels adjustments that we did before, colors, levels. And you can see this histogram is now barely showing anything because we, ha we already have that nice high contrast situation. So we just want to bump that up a little bit and then play with where our mid ranges are, are living. I would say something like that looks pretty good. Uh, the only other step after that is to just do some, uh, do some cleanup work. The cleaner image you have, especially if you if you did want to screen print this, um, you want this to be as clean as possible for printing purposes. But for auto tracing, you want to keep your image as clean as you can 
because the cleaner image you send it over to the auto tracer, the better your auto trace is going to turn out. So cleaning up some of this small gunk that fills up your, your area will be helpful, especially when it gets to stuff like this. It's like weird scratch in his pants here. Just clean that up with a brush and you'll feel a lot better about it by the time it gets to be traced. So something along those lines works pretty well. Uh, looks like there's just a couple spots of black in here that you can just fill in. And then to get to that real nice image that we saw here, uh, just use a brush, paint out the things that you don't want. Oh, we want to use white. There we go. And then we'll just make a big rectangle selection. To pull everything. Just a little bit off here, a little bit in here. And then we can select the opposite of that. We can do that by, it looks like that's up in select. Select invert. There we go. Fill that with white. And then just finish off by painting off these last portions here. And that'll just about do ya. Now at this point, you'll be able to bring in this image over to a vector trace program. Um, your Illustrator or Inkscape or Corel and Get a nice image that's going to trace very easily, be very accurate to the original concept, and go real smooth for you. The only other thing we're going to do is just pop out this coin. Because this is not going to trace very well no matter what, since it's a half tone. If you did want to use this half tone for screen printing, it should be fine. It would work. Uh, somewhat. You might want to push up the contrast just a little bit more before you print it out to make sure you get a good burn. But uh, in this case, I'm going to be remaking it in the vectors. So there you go. Just like that, we got pretty close to the original. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments. Uh, find us online at factory2.org and come visit us. We're here in Flint, Michigan. Uh, ready to be the community makerspace. So if you have any questions, again, comments, contact us anytime. We'd love to help out. Check out the other videos.